What's going on guys? This is Rob and we are continuing our series on Omega level mutants or beyond Omega level mutants. Any of you guys who were old enough to remember when this series first started, we called it like Omega and beyond Omega level mutants. And then we just shorthanded the name. So like newcomers are like, that guy's not beyond Omega level. And the old school fans are like, that's not exactly what the series means. Even though that's what Rob calls it, he probably should change it back to the old name. The important thing here is <laughs> we are continuing on with someone that I'm surprised we never made a video on Charles Xavier, better known as Professor X. So Charles Xavier was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby and first appeared in the X-Men number one in 1963. Now Xavier's father was a famous scientist whose contributions to nuclear physics made his family extremely wealthy. And so Charles' father dies while Charles is a young child and his mother remarries his friend and partner, Kurt and Marco. Soon after this, Charles' mutant powers manifest and he discovers that he has the ability to read the minds of others. Now Charles is a naturally gifted student and his mutant power makes him even more successful academically but also causes him to lose his hair at a very young age he goes on to graduate from college at the age of 16 and he later goes on to become a professor at both oxford and columbia university you know something i've always wondered british members of the rob corps give me the rundown on oxford in the in the comment section is it like the english version of like harvard or is it just that high above every university everywhere in the world like just let me know like what What's the ranking? Like if you get, like if you're accepted into Oxford, is that like, wow, like man, or is it like, cool. I mean, you know, I have a few friends that go there. I mean, is that, is that what it is? <laughs> because <laughs> I've always been kind of curious. But Charles ends up falling in love with a girl named Mora in grad school and the two become engaged. But then Charles gets drafted into the army and fights in the Korean War, during which time Mora breaks up with him and then marries an abusive ex-boyfriend. Now in an attempt to get over Mora McTaggart, Charles begins traveling the world, including a stop in Cairo, Egypt, where he meets the Shadow King, a mutant using his powers to perpetrate crime. Now after the Shadow King nearly kills him, Charles dedicates his life to promoting the harm harmonious balance between humans and mutants. Now, the primary way he sought to do this was through Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters, which he founded in the mansion he'd grown up in to train a team of mutant superheroes, hoping that if the world saw mutants using their powers for good, they'd be more accepting of mutant kind. The problem is the exact opposite happened. And that's the main reason we've basically been reading 60 years of X-Men comics, where Professor X has usually been leading a team of X-Men and they're trying in vain to accomplish his dream. Now, while there are many telepaths within Marvel Comics. This is very important. Charles Xavier is arguably the most powerful. Unlike some mutants who have a variety of different powers, telepathy is the only power that Xavier possesses, but he is so adept at it that he's able to use it in incredible ways. At one point, Xavier was able to read every mind on the planet simultaneously and could feel their emotions as well as reading their thoughts. While that is impressive in and of itself, the range of Xavier's telepathy is not limited merely to Earth. He's been able to contact the X-Men from halfway across the solar system and was even able to reach Colossus and Magneto on the space station Avalon from Earth with another Omega level telepath, Exodus, running psychic interference. Literally, Exodus was trying to stop him and he was still able to do it anyway. To give you guys perspective on this, even Jean Grey, as powerful as she is, doesn't seem to have the same level of telepathy as Charles Xavier unless she's in possession of the Phoenix Force. In more recent years that's kind of changed and then she went back to being her weaker self emma frost has always kind of been up there but still it's an impressive display now xavier is able to do some pretty interesting things with his telepathy such as transferring feelings from one individual to another for example when the x-men were finding a group of aliens and found themselves outmatched xavier searched the world for people exhibiting goodwill and compassion weeding out those who were full of hatred prejudice and cruelty and then transferred those positive feelings to the x-men to give them the positive energy they need which somehow allows them to become more powerful and defeat the aliens. With your feelings combined, we are the X-Men. X-Men, X-Men, we've got feelings. I, I don't know, I'm, uh, let's ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> I love to sing. Anybody who's been around this channel long enough knows I love to sing. I love to sing songs. But on a much larger scale, Xavier performed a similar feat when he transferred the emotions of the entire Scroll homeworld into the mind of Galactus. That was an amazing moment in the comics. But Professor Xavier's telepathy is so powerful, Juggernaut's helmet was unable to stop it despite making him nearly invulnerable to psychic attacks. And Xavier has accomplished a similar feat with Magneto, who also wears a telepathy-resistant helmet. Now, 
Xavier also overpowered Cyclops when Cyclops was in possession of half of the Phoenix Force, one of the most powerful entities in the Marvel Universe, and on another occasion, takes over the mind of both Cyclops and Emma Frost, each of which have half of the Phoenix Force at the time. Now, even though telepathy is his only power, Xavier is able to use it in a variety of ways. He's also able to cause people to forget things, render himself invisible, and cause others to hallucinate, feel pain, or become paralyzed. He can take full control of a person's mind, is one of the few telepaths that can actually communicate with animals, and can cause others to lose their senses of sight, smell, and hearing. In some instances, he's even been able to shut off the mutant abilities of others. He's also shown an ability to reprogram the minds of others as he did with Wolverine during their first encounter. Wolverine had actually been sent to assassinate Xavier, which is kind of cool, but upon meeting him, Xavier reprogrammed his mind so that he believed his real purpose in coming to Xavier's school was to join the X-Men. Now, this reprogramming is not permanent, and Wolverine's healing factor caused his mind to revert to its original state faster than it normally would have. Similarly, upon his first meeting with Jean Grey, Xavier placed mental blocks in her mind so she would not be aware of her mutant powers because he believed she was not yet able to control them. Now, an important distinction here is that when it comes to Jean Grey's powers, really it was just her telepathy that was blocked because it was overwhelming for her. She just simply couldn't control it. Initially, you didn't know that in Marvel Comics, and it wasn't until much later, I think during the Arnold Drake run that you learned about that, and then you learned about it in the X-Men Origins one-shot that focused on, on Jean Grey. There was a little bit of diving into that with Bizarre Adventures number 27 back in the day by Chris Claremont, but nonetheless, it's one of those things you didn't really know right off the bat. But regardless, Xavier's telepathy allows him to create psychic bolts that are powerful enough to incapacitate or even kill those he uses them on. He can also project his astral form into the astral plane, and within the astral plane, create objects and control or obliterate other astral forms. Finally, he's able to impart his knowledge to others in a very short amount of time. So things that would take months to learn happen in only hours because Xavier's able to alter the perception of time within those that he's telepathically connected to. Now, with all that said, elephant in the room. In the most recent listing of Omega level mutants officially from Marvel by way of Jonathan Hickman's House of X and Powers of X, Professor Xavier is not listed. So up to this point, Marvel's not a officially given Professor X the designation of Omega level, but I contend that with everything we've seen him do throughout the history of Marvel Comics, he should be. First of all, there are mutants like Apocalypse and Nate Gray that are not on the list, but are definitely Omega level mutants. So I don't think that we have to take this list as being comprehensive. Second of all, Xavier's widely regarded as the most accomplished and powerful telepath in existence. And if we look at the feats that he's accomplished with his telepathy, it's not a huge leap to put him in the Omega level category. He's connected the minds of every individual on the planet without the aid of Cerebro, which is good evidence that he could affect the Earth on a planetary scale if he chose to, which would be strong evidence that he is Omega level. He's also affected Galactus telepathically and has restrained individuals in possession of the Phoenix Force, which in and of itself is an omniversal force. So if we look at the actual telepathic feats he's achieved, he seems more deserving of a place on this list than someone like Jean Grey or Quentin Quire. But with that being said guys we're gonna bring this to an end thank you all for watching make sure you leave a comment down below letting me know who else you want to see on our beyond omega level series and i will catch you all later peace